Hello everyone, welcome to the Criterion Connection, I'm Wade. And I'm Joe. And uh, we're back, uh, it's been a while, uh, been a lot of things going on, like just busyness, uh, some family stuff, some work stuff, all kinds of stuff, but we're back. Just a time for spooky season too. So we're going to do a movie that's not spooky, we're going to do Mona Lisa by... Well, uh, it could be spooky, yeah, it's, it's, got, it's got a slasher moment in it. Yeah, oh yeah, there's uh, from 1986 starring Bob Haskins, it's, we did not do this video because they announced the new Mario... Uh, casting. That's, yeah, I, that is completely coincidental. Yeah, it's very coincidental. So we didn't do that at all. Uh, you know, he was in all kinds of stuff. I mean, he was in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Um, he's in Hook. He's Smee. Bob Hoskins is great, man. Yeah. He, oh. he is great. Uh, who framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it stars all kinds of people. Michael Caine. Michael, Michael Caine. Yeah. Uh, uh, Robbie Coltrane, better known as Hagrid. Yes, as Hagrid. Yes, that's yeah. Um, he's he's also in it. Uh, Clark Peters, he plays Anderson. He's uh, he's mostly known for The Wire. Yeah. He's Lester Freeman in The Wire, which is he's like one of the best characters. <laughs> and that was twenty years later. Yeah. <laughs> so this movie is about a down out kind of like. He's a gangster. He's an ex con, uh, that got out of prison. And he's trying to make right with his his his, uh, his family, his ex wife, now ex wife, hmm. and uh, his daughter. And what, by the way, wait, what gave you the clue that it might be his ex wife? I don't know. The first uh, <laughs> uh, after the opening credits, he goes to the house of flowers, and he gets basically berated and attacked, and the whole neighborhood comes out. Yeah, <laughs> Bob Hoskins plays uh, George, mm -hmm. and um, he stumbles upon a job. Well, for a high pay, a high end call girl, Miss yeah, Simone. He, yeah, he's a low level kind of gangster. Basically, runs with Michael Caine as kind of an underling. Yeah, and Michael Caine's kind of the big mover and shaker. And Bob Hoskins just gets out of jail. He did a seven year bid. And as gangsters, what you do is you. Don't talk. You do your time. You get out, and the and the boss takes care of you. So he just did seven years for his boss, essentially, and his boss is nowhere to be found when he comes home. And it's just after the meeting with his wife and his daughter that he wants to come back and be in her life, but his ex-wife is saying, "No, you're a bad apple." Yeah, which he is. Um, and then he finds out his boss is gone, so he's just kind of... He gets a rabbit for the, <laughs> for the boss at one point. Yeah, and so him and his best friend, uh, played by Robbie Coltrane, they bond over art and, like, mystery novels. Yeah. Which is great. Uh, is one of the f great f character traits for me, is Robbie Coltrane being this, this artist-slash-mechanic... Yeah. Who has this giant library of mystery novels that George can always figure out the twist before the ending. Yeah. <laughs> it's but yet great. He, but yet he can't f figure out the twist of this movie. True. Yeah. And that's what's, you know, great about his character. You he know. feels like... He feels like a schmuck. Like, like you know, there's <laughs> some of these characters that are very mysterious. So like, yeah. This is technically a neo-noir movie. And uh, okay. according to some people on like Letterboxd, so they say it's a neo noir. I don't think it I, is. I get it with the, the storyline of uh, him looking for Kathy. Yeah. Um, I get that. But he's like, he's not the most handsome guy. He's literally no. a schmo. <laughs> he's literally a schmuck. He's. The character. It's basically about him and Simone. Mm -hmm. And they're both using each other. Yep. She's filling a void in his life. Mm -hmm. And. He's kind of doing her bidding. Kind of like the Johns do for her. Right, and it, and I think it's also kind of a way for him to kind of understand where his daughter's coming from. So... He sees his, his underage prostitution going on, and he's yeah. like, this could be my daughter. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a really interesting thing where he comes back, and basically he gets set up uh, where his job is to pretty much drive around Simone 
who we find out is a high-end uh, sex worker um, that has these high-profile clients, and he just kind of drives her back and forth, but he's he's been gone for seven years. One of the great early setup for his character is they give him a beeper, and he's like, I don't understand what this is. Yeah. I don't have a phone. How does it receive signal if it doesn't have an antenna? He dresses all like he's from the 70s and yeah. kinds of stuff. Because he's, he's missed the entire 80s and this new technology boom. And the excess. Yeah. And so when he's, you know, kind of re-emerging in society, he's out of, you know, out of step. And so Simone tries to teach him, like... You gotta be like less of a a dick. Yeah. You have to dress better. We almost had a dress montage. Yeah, you have to dress better because it comes off like I'm totally a high class sex worker when I'd rather just be a high high class woman. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's a it's, then we get to like a whole. What I like about the movie is it's well paced. Yeah. It flies by. It's an hour and forty four minutes. It flies by. Mm -hmm. Uh, the part, the Kathy, where he finds Kathy, he finds Kathy eventually, uh, is at exactly the halfway point. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that changes the whole story. Yep. And everything, like, all the decisions are now changed, and, and, and like, everything weighs that kind of stuff. Yeah. Speaking of, like, things turning, like, everything shifting, the elevator scene, which is one of the most frightening scenes in the whole movie, I think. I, that's, Tense. That's one of the scariest scenes I've seen in a while. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of great uh, camera work. Just great direction on that. And also that um, Anderson's kind of threatening. Scary man. Yeah. Very scary man when he wants to be. Um, <laughs> the only complaint I have in the movie is probably... Michael Caine's kind of... He's kind of just generic... <laughs> yeah. Boss. I feel like... When you know Michael Caine from like stuff like Dress to Kill or other stuff, like just it's more older when he's more older. Like yeah. it's just you just know he could do better. Yeah. Like he has it, to sink his teeth into. It's one of those things where you're like, do do we get into this character more or do we hold back because the focus is on Bob Hoskins, Simone, and them. And that's the thing, like, you just kind of teeter on that line. And and for you, they kind of, it, it seems like they fall on, they don't do enough with, uh, was it Dudley? It's, uh... Oh, no, not Dudley, um, Mortwell or something. Mortwell, it's Mortwell. Yeah. Um, Denny, Denny Mortwell. Yeah. Um, for me, it's like, he gets across just enough menace and, like, two-faced kind of yeah because if you remember when when they grab kathy when she's uh with the old man where he sneaks in and grabs her real quick uh michael kane comes in he's like what did you do with her like he's like angry at the old man and then real quick on a dime he's like don't worry we'll fix everything for you yeah like he just he's so like he he, he still has that like he can just get unhinged in a second. Yeah, and I think the other thing is I kind of wish it was more of the daughter. She's not really in it a lot. True. To where it's like, it's got to be... She's a bit of an afterthought. Yeah, and then it's like, it's a big crux with the motivation near the end is her, and it's just like, I don't know. She, she kind of felt like tacked on. Yeah. I guess so. I, I see what you mean. He has to look like a total schmo, a total loser. Mm-hmm. Like, he has to have some sort of goal. I think he just doesn't know what goal it is. Because he's still trying to find himself in society after being in jail. Right. Um, so, I mean, would you recommend this movie to the average general audience? I'd say yeah. Um, to me, it's, it's, it's an interesting take on, like, you know, uh, an ex-convict... You know, uh, you know, a guy who is running with the criminal underground, but still, like, it's kind of like deep cover in that way, where it's, you know, you've got a guy trying to do the right thing, but he's technically a bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I think it's an interesting story. 
And then I, I like the idea of him kind of getting sucked in again. You know, after already doing a seven-year bid. Yeah. And I like a lot of the character detail. Like, I love Co Robbie Coltrane's character that we don't talk a lot about. It's just kind of a best friend character, but they do so much with him. And I guess, by comparison, like, Michael Caine and Bob Hoskins' daughter uh, just don't match up in a supporting <coughs> character role. So... I, I'd still recommend it. I, th I think it's a great movie. And Bob Hoskins' performance, uh, which we forgot to mention, won. Oh. And I, you know, it was nominated, nominated for an Oscar, and I think he might have won a BAFTA. Oh, he did, yeah. Um, it's a great performance, and, and he, he plays it extremely well. Uh, and Simone gives a great performance, the, the yeah. one who plays Simone. Oh, God, it's Catherine. I, it starts with a T, anyway. Uh, she's great. I feel um, bad that I forgot. She's her. also in uh, Serpent in the Rainbow, which is a really messed up... That's a great movie, too. ...Wes Craven film. Uh, that's not going to be on the Criterion Collection anytime soon. I wish it was, but it won't be. Um, but yeah, I'd also recommend it for the same reasons. Uh, if you want to watch it, it's on HBO Max, and it's mm -hmm. also on the Criterion channel. Yep. Also, it recently got released on Blu-ray and DVD this month, so you can uh, go buy it there if you really like it. Um... But yeah, I mean, that's our thoughts. Uh, let us know in the comment section below what's your thoughts on Mona Lisa. What's another film that we should be doing uh, that we haven't done yet? We've done a lot. We've done over, we're almost at 200 movies. Um, and they keep adding them. They keep adding them. Um, but let us know. Um, I know in October we're going to be doing mostly horror movies because it's our, it's our spooky season. And, um, yeah. So we'll probably be doing a lot of that. But we are... November's free, December's free, you know, we have nothing really super planned episode-wise, so that's when you come in and suggest stuff, and we might do them. We have a list still somewhere. We gotta dust it off. But, uh, until next time, I'm Wade. And I'm still Joe. And we will see you later!